Hi, I'm a comedian. I'm here to literally tell jokes, which means I have no ideas worth spreading. Last year, I was sitting there in the audience. This year, I am up on stage. Looks like somebody's vision board is paying off. <laughs> Woohoo! I know some of you have had your phones out, even though we're not supposed to. But honestly, I too have had to Google a lot of words today said by these speakers. TED Talks are full of insights, information, and eye-opening discoveries. I have none of that. I come to you with something nobody else will bring. Zero knowledge to take home with you. <laughs> I have nothing. <laughs> Think about it. I could try to have something smart to say, something comedy club goers would also laugh at such as, you know what's funny about quantum physics, but you TED people would all be like, yes, we do. <laughs> there goes my big closer. So how about this? Think of me as a palate cleanser. I am the watermelon sorbet of the TED Talk world. But as much as I love a good watermelon sorbet, and who doesn't, did you know that one of the best palate cleansers is just white bread? Who knew I've been palate cleansing my whole life? <laughs> After all, I'm from Wisconsin, don't you know? Oh, in Wisconsin, we love white bread. It's its own food group. I can't think of a Wisconsin meal that doesn't include white bread. Sometimes I take two pieces of white bread and I put another piece of white bread in the middle. <laughs> if I'm being honest, using white bread as a palate cleanser is a problem for me. It's full of carbs, it's very addicting, and I can't stop eating it. When I'm at a restaurant and they're like, do you want some bread? I'm like, no, yes, I do, but I don't. I don't want bread. Bring some bread. Wait, don't bring bread. Wait, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, palate cleansing. Once at a very formal dinner, I was brought a delightful palate cleanser of fragrant lemon water. As I sipped from the bowl, the person next to me said, that's a finger bowl. I went on sipping. <laughs> I thought it was delicious. I've also read that you can retrain your palate. Did you know that? For example, in order to have a more refined palate, you just start eliminating anything unpleasant. I did that with a divorce. <laughs> I don't even like calling him my ex. He was definitely more of a, why? Anyways, I wanted to be really prepared for this moment. Take standing on this red dot, for example. This is the TED red dot. This is a huge deal. This is such a big deal that during practice, I even went out and bought a round red <laughs> bath mat. Say that 10 times fast. See, normally, when we performers come out on stage, we're looking for a tiny little piece of gaffer's tape, which is how they tell us where they want us to stand. This giant red dot is so much better. It's like I'm standing on Mars. See, that's something smart. <laughs> did you see how I did that? I brought up Mars. Now I'm speaking the TED lingo. Honestly, I have always been such a huge fan of TED Talks. In the beginning, I thought all three letters were capitalized in TED because they wanted us to shout it. People would ask, what are you listening to? And I'd say, TED! If it were up to me, they'd have TED behind me in big letters with a big exclamation point after it. And Taylor Swift would be opening for me. No? 
She didn't reply at all. That's rude. <laughs> and I'm a Swifty. What was I talking about again? Oh, yeah. My love of TED Talks. Seriously, it's even gotten me into some trouble. Once, when my daughter was about five, I was going into her room for our special mommy and me bedtime routine, and she was crying hysterically. I said, oh my gosh, what's wrong? Why are you crying? She says, not another TED Talk. I want Goodnight Moon, <laughs> not Brene Brown's talk on vulnerability. <laughs> now she's in high school. And when I ask her, what did you learn in school today? Her subjects are so advanced. So I'll say, can you tell me more so I can understand? And then she says, mom, I don't have time for that. But I'll send you a TED talk on it. <laughs> but what she does have time for are all those TikTok dance challenges that go viral. I love those. Come to think of it, maybe that's the way to get TED Talks to go viral on TikTok. Okay, how's this? If your talk deals with climate change and the surface below you is getting hotter, have a lot of hopping. Huh? That'll wake them up. If you discuss anything in aerospace, wave your arms in the air. Get them up there. People get the point. And vulnerability. Just cry. Then TED could be renamed Technology, Entertainment, Dance. Thank you.